Today we're out here in the in the shop and I got to do some maintenance to my steel MS391. What I need to do is a whole list of things, um, including a modification to the exhaust that's going to wake the saw up, give it a little bit of extra power. I need to do a general clean and maintenance on it. I'm going to replace the chain on it. And then after I do the modification to the muffler, uh, and I do the service and everything, I'm going to show you how to uh, tune the carburetor um, on this saw itself. Now, the reason I decided to make this video, I've had this saw for a very long time, um, but when it came to trying to find information on how to do the exhaust modification, uh, I couldn't find anything for this particular saw. There's lots of content out there for different chainsaws, uh, but this one seems to be pretty elusive. Again, this is a steel MS uh, 391. Uh, I will tell you that um, this saw was a gift. It was a housewarming gift when we moved out here to the forest uh, by my father-in-law. Um, we identified a tree on the property that immediately had to come down uh, that the previous owners just neglected and it was a danger. So he ran out and while we were moving stuff in and he bought me this saw and I cut it down that afternoon. Now, if I was to purchase a saw myself, I would pour a little bit more research into it. I didn't know that I was getting a saw. Um, he asked me if I had a chainsaw. I said, no, it's on my list of stuff to do, to get. And so he just left and came back with a saw. So I'm very grateful. It's been a fantastic saw. If I had to do it over again, I would have gotten the professional series. Uh, this is like the top, I would say this one's like top of the line of the homeowner series. Um, so some of the differences, for example, like these uh, dogs, these little things that bite into the tree trunk while you're cutting um, are pretty small. Um, it's a lower powered saw. Uh, and that's why I want to do this modification, kind of wake it up a little bit. Uh, it's perfectly fine the way it is, but I like a little bit more speed. I want a little bit more power. And the reason why I decided to do this was I was running my neighbor saw, helping him with a project here about a week or so ago. And he's got the professional series version of this saw. I believe it was the 360 one, but it's a professional series. And he did this modification to it and it was night and day. My saw doesn't hold a candle to his saw. So I'm going to do all this stuff and I'm gonna show you exactly what I do. So I already got the saw warmed up, but let's hear what it sounds like right now. Um, I'm gonna fire it up and we're gonna hear what it sounds like without this muffler mod so I can play the two clips side by side. So let's get that done. Please don't mind the state of affairs that my shop garage is in. I'm gonna leave that cover off for the time being. So the brake is set on the chain. Uh, you're supposed to set it down on the ground and, and fire it up that way. Um, honestly, I never have. Uh, I just fired up. Now, what I just did, so you, so you know, is I squeeze the triggers and I push this all the way down the full choke. Probably don't have to because I did just warm up the saw before doing this. You always want to warm up a saw uh, before just starting it up and ripping through it. Um, that's a great way to score your um, piston ring in there. You'll lose compression, you'll destroy the saw. So let it warm up and before just giving it all on that trigger. So it's already warm, I already did that. Uh, so I, you squeeze the trigger and the, the safety switch, push the, the switch all the way down to choke, push in the compression um, thing here that just kind of opens up, makes it easier to pull. Uh, once you hear it try to run on its own, you want to take that off a of choke, just click it up in the high idle. Like I said, I probably could do that right now, but we're gonna go through it. All I do is just <laughs> drop it. and I flooded it. It didn't need to be choked. Okay, so as you can see, the chain is a little loose. Um, this chain, it's not dead, but it's really, really dull. Um, I did get a, I did get a uh, Oregon chain. 
Um, basically, it's the same chain that's on here, 3 8 inch, uh, 50 thou. Um, so we'll be installing that. I uh, also went to the hardware store and picked up the steel service kit. And this is for the MS391. And basically it is air filter, spark plug, and fuel filter. This fuel filter is weighted, so it actually will follow the, the fuel. Uh, I'll show you how to put all that in. Uh, tools we're gonna need. We're gonna need this little guy. Um, if you don't have one of these, uh, go to your um, authorized steel dealer or whatever and get one. They're pretty much invaluable for what for running a saw. Uh, they do make them with different ends on them. Uh, they do have the Torx uh, bit on here too um, for doing all your Torx ends, or they got the flathead. Uh, mine came with the flathead, so that's what I have. Uh, I just have Torx bits, and this is the one we're going to be using today. This is the T27, I believe, and that's what we're going to use for there. That's still pretty hot, so I'm not going to touch it. Um, what we're going to do first is we're going to take the, the bar and chain off. Uh, I'm, when I go back on, I'll go back on with the new one, but right now let's just get this guy off. So to do that, if you don't know, all you do is loosen these up and take them completely off. Use the big side on your little wrench here. Now when I take this off, you're going to see some damage in here. And that's if uh, you know anything about saws, uh, you'll understand why uh, it's damaged. Uh, it's caused by um, the chain derailment. Um, so some of the plastic is actually broken out of here. This little metal piece down here is all marred up from, from the chain coming around and smacking that. Uh, I didn't actually get hurt when it, done, when it did that. Um, and it's caused by running a chain too loose. So you have to stop every once in a while and actually tighten up your chain. So um, now I just with that cover off, we're just going to grab this thing and just pull it right off. So I'm just going to take the chain completely off because this guy, uh, I am going to be getting uh, one of those electric chain sharpeners soon. And I'll just, I'll use it on there um, to touch up the edge on it and then I'll have another chain. So we'll just set that aside for now. Okay, so at this point we want to start cleaning everything out. Now, I discovered a long time ago um, what the best, I'm putting the nuts back on here so I don't lose them, by the way. That's another pro tip. Uh, looks like my battery on the camera is going to die. Fantastic. So you might have um, noticed too while I was warm up the saw and I was showing what it sounds like that you uh, never want to hold the trigger down wide open um, without being in the cut for more than just a few seconds. That's really hard on the saw uh, without any load on it, running full tilt like that. So um, just run it for a few seconds and then get off that trigger. So, um, so at this point, there is more to do inside of here as far as the clutch goes, uh, how to lubricate it and change it and all that kind of stuff. That's beyond the scope of this video right now. Um, I just did that last year and it really I haven't had that many hours on the saw since. Uh, so it's not really necessary to um, do anything with the clutch right now. So uh, at this point, we just clean it up really well. Uh, the best thing that I learned for this, uh, uh, cleaner wise, if you can identify this, by the way, this can, leave it in the comments below. Um, some of the older folks, I'm sure, will know what this is. I got a lot of these things. I'm sure you do too. Uh, but anyway, they're great for what I'm about to do. <laughs> um, the best thing that I found to use for cleaner, uh, for pine sap and that sort of thing, is actually your old gas that's in here. So I'm just gonna pop the top on this. And that should be relatively full. And it is. This thing popped off a long time ago and I have not been able to get it back in there. It's kind of bare. So I'm just gonna take this and dump it right into here. And of course I spill everywhere. It's fine, it's gonna happen. And then just take an old dirty rag, soak it in a little bit of gas, and then just watch the pine tar and all that crap just melt. All the oil, all the gunk, 
So it's not really that dirty because I I do this every once in a while after I'm after a day's work or something. I'll just wipe it down. Uh, also fire up the air compressor and blow things out, which I do that on a regular basis as well. So you just want to wipe everything down, get in here real well, get all this, get all the crap out. Make sure that your oiler channel here is uh, well clear, not all gummed up. Blow it out with the air compressor again. I'm not going to fire up the air compressor right now. I just cleaned this not that long ago, so I'm not going to get too involved on video here with the cleaning. You get the idea um, what you need to do here. So with the bar, it's the exact same thing. You want to wipe it down real well with the gas. These little holes that are right here. Oh, is that not going to focus? Focus! Anyway, there's a little hole right here and one right here on the other side. That's where the oil goes into the bar and the chain takes it from here and lubricates the entire bar. You want to take your air compressor and blow that out real well. Make sure that that's nice and clear. Uh, if your oiler stops working or your uh, chain doesn't get oil, uh, it will wear that chain out real fast. It will overheat. The links will start sticking together and that sort of thing. You know, your nose wheel here. Uh, some have a little hole that you can actually pump grease into. This one doesn't. Um, but your nose wheel will start to get kind of nasty and, and it's bad. So make sure that your oiler is in good shape. Set that aside when it's done. Uh, let's see, I need another can. I'm going to take all the gas out of this. Because we don't need any of this gas in there. It's all old gas. And we'll just set that aside. Throw it on the burn pile later. I had got these a long time ago. These are some long reach uh, needle nose pliers and they are great for doing this. You just reach in there and grab that oil line. It's in your oil tank. Try to, try to grab it anyway. If you're worried about getting gas on your fingers, wear gloves. I should be wearing gloves, but I'm not too horribly concerned about it. I can't, of course, grab that now that it's on video. There we go. Just pop that off. Just like that. And of course, I'm not ready with the new one. Again, just got this stuff at the local hardware store. That's a steel dealership as well. All right, I go back in there for that line. It does stretch a little bit, but don't, you don't want to go reefing on it. I got it stretched out quite a bit here. Push your new fuel filter on. Push it back outside there, just like that. And then, you know, I've tried so many ways of, there's a little slot inside of here that the little ball goes into. Try and get it hooked on there and pulled up. I've tried for hours to get that in there. It just doesn't ever want to go. Okay. So then we'll do a spark plug. I need my little tool. There it is. This just turns counterclockwise and comes right off your air cleaner. We'll go right back on with the new one. There we 
we go. Pull your spark plug wire off, maybe. Well, that's really on there. There we go. Now you use your wrench. Pull your spark plug out. Now you can look at it, you know, this spark plug, gosh, it won't focus at all, will it? This spark plug is in great shape. There's actually no reason to uh, worry about replacing it right now. But, you know, the kit I think was like just a couple of dollars. They're not very expensive at all. So I'm just going to replace it and not, not even worry about it. This is yearly maintenance that I do for this saw, by the way. Uh, I don't do this, um, but one, maybe once a year in the winter time uh, when I'm not using the saw so much. So. And then we just torque it down. It doesn't have to be uber tight, uh, but it, shouldn't be it should be more than finger tight. We'll put the wire back on, make sure it's all the way on, and it is. So while we're under here, one more thing to do, and that is, it's kind of hard to see, this little guy right here, it's a little tab. Let me get close to the camera, can see. Uh, this little tab right here that the flashlight's shining on, this guy. Um, this allows warm air from the engine to come back in here into the intake. Now, that's great in the winter time, which it is now. We're coming in the winter, so I'm going to take this off and set it in the safe spot because in the summertime, I'm going to put that back on. Now, some people say don't even worry about it. Some people say just leave it on. Uh, don't, don't need to worry about running warm air in the wintertime. Once the saw is warmed up, it's fine. Uh, I've always taken it off, and that's what the owner's manual says. So that's what I do. So I just take it off and it's good. So, um, so at this point, the saw is ready to go back together again, uh, except we're going to do the modification. Now this is, we're encroaching on territory that I'm, I've done some research into, uh, and some reading and some watching of other people do different saws. So I feel confident to do it to this saw, um, but I've never done it before. So that's my disclaimer. Um, I'm just kind of cleaning up a little bit here. Some of the stuff we don't need anymore. So one of the first things we need to do is if you look on here, we have our high, our low, and our idle. Why it's LA for idle, I have no idea. Um, but we need to remove the limiter caps in here and they are in the carburetor itself, which means I have to get to it somehow, some way. Now, I don't really want to take the entire carburetor out. So I'm looking at a way of doing this. I can see the limiter caps right there. Um, but I can't get to them, uh, without, with all the stuff in the way. So. I'll be right back. So I don't really know a lot about this carburetor. I've never had this carburetor off. Uh, I've taken off the air cleaner again and taken a better look at what I'm doing. And I'm going to bring in a little closer here so you can see a little better. So I'm hoping you can see a little better in here. So you bring your screwdriver in here and it, it attacks these little plastic screws that are inside of here. And I thought these are the limiter caps. However, if you look inside here, I don't know if you can see that very well. Oh my gosh. It's kind of hard to see. And of course it's not going to focus. Come on, focus. Thank you. Uh, where are we at here? We're looking right inside of here. They're supposed to be red and those are white. So again, 
I haven't found any content on how to do this for the saw. And I don't know if I am turning that needle valve by turning this plastic piece or not. I don't know what kind of head is on there. The only way to find out is to pull this carburetor out and I'm just not prepared to do that right now. I am still going to go forth with the uh, taking the muffler off and doing that modification. But we may, if these are limiter caps, which again, I don't know if they are or not, um, then if I'm not getting my numbers when we go to tune it later, then I will have to pull this off and I'll show that obviously. But I wanna do the modification first and try to tune it with these caps here. If these are caps, I just don't know. Um, and I might end up cutting this plastic piece off to get to them easier to pull them out. Um, that might be something that I try. I don't know yet. So uh, let's just move on with the, the whole modification. And if we need to revisit these, then we will. Okay, so moving on, the muffler. So. Yeah, it's definitely cooled down now. Um, it's only been probably 30 minutes or so since we warmed it up. So um, Now at first I was really confused on how to get this muffler off because of course my neighbor said, well, you just unscrew it and it's not a big deal. Um, but these things, I'm looking at these going, I don't see how those unscrew and I don't see any more screws anywhere around this. What's the deal? So I finally just sucked it up and I grabbed my little steel screwdriver and I wedged it under here and I just started pulling these out and I realized that these are caps. I'll try not to lose this one. They're not spring loaded. I just gave it a little too much. There we go. So as you can see here, they're just little clips that clip in there. What their purpose is, I'm not really sure. Um, I'm guessing just to keep debris from collecting inside there and burning, maybe. So that other cap's right over there, it's not a big deal. So I discovered then that the uh, T27 Torx fits these in there just fine. I got my ratcheting screwdriver here. They're in there pretty far. So that's one of them. So the whole thing, nope, oh, that's still hold on by a thread. The whole thing comes off. I'm gonna get that screw out. It's just the two screws. We got our muffler here. And this guy that just flopped over is the gasket. And so, now what we're going to do is, as you can see, this goes on there just like that. We'll get this all cleaned up, clean up that. But you can see all this exhaust has a big old port to go through and it comes out this itty bitty little hole right there. Now we're going to cut some slits into here, maybe one up here, and make bend them so they're a little bit like a louver and that's going to allow this exhaust to come out better. So we're basically giving it the, uh, the ability to breathe better. And because we're allowing more air to flow through, we have to allow more fuel to flow through, which is why we need to do the carburetor uh, readjustment. So uh, first things first though, I do need to protect that. Because if you look right inside there, it might be kind of hard to see. Once again, because it's really dark and then we get the flashlight. Right there is the piston. So we definitely don't want a bunch of dirt and contaminants and crap getting in there. I'm just gonna take a paper towel and just kind of shove it in there a little bit. I'm trying hard not to take any of the dirt that's in there, and, you know, around it, in there with it. So now at this point, we can set this aside because all we're doing now is working on this guy here. So 
I'll be right back. I got to get set up to do this and I'll be right back with you. Okay, sorry about that. I uh, had to get my Dremel tool set up here so I can make these cuts. Now, also, safety first. I am wearing my um, safety glasses here. These things have a tendency of blowing up on me. Um, and all I'm going to do is cut this like this, one here like that, and one down here like this. And then we'll go from there. Um, so yeah, let's make it happen. Okay. So I got three slits in there just like that. Now we're going to take a, a screwdriver and we're going to let's I want the vents to go down so I have to come to the top kind of pooch that out a little bit Do I want to go that way no I want to go this way pooch the bottom out Basically, I'm making louvers that the uh, exhaust gases can be directed down and away from me while I'm cutting. There. So this one kind of got messed up a little bit, but it's really easy to bend. So I just added a whole bunch of um, exhaust ventilation, black, you know, more than that little hole there. Some people, they drill a bunch of holes and stuff like that. I think that looks a little better than just a bunch of holes. So at this point, I think we're ready to go back together with it. Okay. So there's a right way and a wrong way this goes on. And I believe this is the right way. There's a little ledge that that slit slits on. I don't even know if you can see in there very well. It's pretty dark. There's a ledge right here that the gasket sits on. It should look just like that. And then this goes on just the way it came off. And there's nothing holding it there. So you have to get your screws on your screwdriver. Some of you guys that had this off before probably are laughing at me right now saying it's not that hard, but I'm not going to go uber tight with this. I'm going to go to just where I feel resistance right there, and then I'm pull it out and do the next one. That way I know that they're lined up and even and I can torque them down evenly. Now what's the torque spec on these? Um, probably right about, oh, there, there, that's about how tight they are. So that's the torque spec. Find my caps, uh, just push these back in. Now that last little bit, there's a little nubbin on those. You got to take something like a small little hammer. This is way overkill, but just pop them in there just like that. We'll take our screws off here and I'll show you how to properly install a chain. Well, how I install a chain. <laughs> so let's see here. We got our new chain. Now, if you guys can tell me the best way of untangling a chainsaw chain new out of the box, I would be really, really appreciative because honestly, I have no idea. Obviously, that's upside down, so I know that that's backwards. 
So if we go this way with it, we put a loop in it. There's just so many things like, what is going on here? <laughs> so, if you guys know a secret to doing this, I'm all ears. One eternity later. Okay, so I got the chain untangled, finally. Um, it's just, <laughs> it takes way too long to do that. Let me zoom out a little bit now that we can see it more. So I finally got the chain untangled. Uh, I got my bar here. Now it was mounted on here right side up where it says steel right side up. So we're gonna flip it upside down. Um, that way we wear the bar evenly. I'm gonna put that on there just like that. Uh, I'm not gonna put the nuts on. I'm going to pick up my chain and I wanna make sure that the chain is cutting in the right direction. Now what do I mean by that? So right here is our tooth, right? And you want to make sure that the rakers go in front of the, of the cutter, cutting teeth. So, and that goes on top, right? So if you have it backwards, you're not going to cut. And uh, you ask a, a million guys that run chainsaws for a living, how to install a chainsaw chain and you will get a million different answers. And this is just the way I do it. Um, I forgot a step. That old chain was kind of loose so I had it tightened up quite a bit. You have to back this off all the way. It's a brand new chain. It's going to be super tight right out of the box. Well not super tight. It's going to be tighter out of the box. Um, so you have to back this adjustment knob, adjustment screw back. Oop. Sorry, the lighting in here is not the greatest, guys. I apologize. I'm not used to filming at my workbench. So. Okay. And then we wrap it around this drive sprocket there. Make sure it's pressed up in there real well. You're going to have a lot hanging down. That's fine. Make sure it's on there. A little tensioner stud is in there. We take our cover after we've cleaned it up. It's still kind of dirty, but oh well. Put it on there. Put the nuts on. I'm going to move it to the end of my bench. That makes it a little easier to go around around here. And I'm going to tighten these all the way up super tight. Well, not super tight, you know, that right there is fine. And you're like, well, dude, you still got to adjust the chain. Holy crap, that's super loose. You're right. But I want to make sure that these are tight first, and then we're going to back them off uh, about a half a turn. Just going to loosen them up right about there. What is that? Maybe half? And then we're going to start tightening. So, and what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the bottom of the chain there and you can see this gap. And I'm going to move the camera here in just a second. See that gap getting smaller and smaller. All right. I'm going to readjust the camera. Okay. So I'm going to try and do this on camera or, you know, I can't, I can't see if, what you're seeing now. So, um, you, what, what I'm looking for here is it kind of goes by feel and it goes by experience. I'd say you don't want your chain too loose because then you'll derail and you'll mess it up. Uh, you don't want your chain too tight because you're going to stretch it out really fast. You're going to put a lot of wear on your nose wheel. Uh, when this thing's ripping, it's going, you know, 1400 RPM, 14,000 RPM. Um, and it's in a oval and it wants to be a circle, right? Um, physics. So you're going to put a lot of stress. If you have it too tight, you're going to put a lot of stress on your drive wheel and your clutch back here and your nose wheel up here. You're going to wear it out. So you want it right in that little sweet spot. And so usually when you're cutting, you're cutting with the bottom of your bar right down here. And so I pull up on the bar. You can see there's some movement there. All pretty much all chainsaws have this. 
So I pull up on it and you can see that that increases this gap here. So I hold it and I tighten it just where those guides are sitting inside there and I let, I pulled the chain down, I can pull it down, but when I let it go, it goes back up into the bar on its own. So that's actually a little bit too loose. Just a little snugger. There we go. While holding up on it, I'm then going to tighten these down the rest of the way. Now it's very critical that you check it again. And it's good. Sometimes if you tighten these down, uh, it will actually get tighter or looser on the chain. And that's why we tighten these down first, then back them off, then adjust the chain, then tighten them up. But sometimes still you'll get some, some movement in the chain. All right. So at this point, uh, I think we're going to put the cover back on. I'm going to move the camera back again. So at this point, I think all we need to do is put this cover back on. I didn't clean the underside of it. It doesn't look too horrible. We're going to fill it up with some gas and then we're going to tune the carburetor. So this just snaps into place just like that. Take my flat screwdriver portion of it here and tighten these down. There are lots of little tips and trips, tricks to do with chainsaw maintenance, especially that. And I don't know everything like I was saying. Um, I'm just a, uh, a guy that uses my saw, that maintains my saw. I don't know everything about every saw out there. And this is not on right. I don't know everything about every saw out there and I certainly don't know, you know, the differences between this one and that one and how to tear these things completely apart. And, uh, oh, that's what's going on here. There we go. Um, I don't know. I couldn't tell you the difference between this saw and, uh, a steel, you know, MS to whatever, you know, I, I, I couldn't tell you those. I couldn't tell you how to pull the engine out on one of these. Um, and never had to, um, I do know how to maintain them to where I don't have to pull the engines out. Uh, I know how to fix certain things on them. Um, and I know how to research them. So, all right. So at this point we need to, all we need to do is top it up with some mixed gas. Uh, and then we'll be ready to fire it up and uh, tune that carburetor. You might ask yourself, Nick, how do you mix gas? I don't, I don't know how to mix two, two stroke gas. Um, there's actually a really, really easy way of doing it. It's a little bit more expensive, but it takes all the guesswork out. And that is to get, you get yourself one of these um, one, one gallon little plastic uh, gas cans here. Uh, write on it that it's for mix only, like I've done here, and get yourself get yourself some of these. These are you buy them in a six pack. Um, they're made by it's made by Still uh, or for Still. Um, you can buy big jugs of these, but then you have to measure. This right here, mixed with one gallon of gasoline, is a perfect fifty to one ratio. And that's what the, the sauce call for is a 50 to one. So get yourself a, a gallon size jug, get you some of these, dump this in, pour your gas in, shake, 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 and you're done. It's really that simple. Um, I got a bunch already mixed up. It's only good for, I would say for like three or four months. So once it starts going bad, uh, then you need to replace it. I just mixed this up here about two weeks ago. So I'm not, concerned about this being old. The gas that was in here though was old. Um, I mix this up because I also have a two stroke uh, snowblower that I've been using. So we're dump some fuel in here. All right.
So what I'm doing now is I am tightening the high and then I'm backing it off about a half a turn. I'm going to tighten the low and then back it off about a half a turn. And we're going to leave the, the idle where it's at. Okay, so uh, full disclosure, this is the second time I've done this. Um, I, I've done it once and I, I adjusted the carburetor. I got really excited. I was talking about how well it's running and how good it sounds. Only to take it back inside the house here, pull the video footage off the camera and find out that the camera had died uh, some point through <laughs> and uh, I have to redo it all for the video. So, but it also reminded me that I forgot to talk about a few very important tips. Um, one, I have the garage door open. It's very well ventilated in here. I got the other garage door open. So we got good airflow in here. Um, it's pretty windy outside too. That's why I'm actually doing this indoors. Uh, if you're doing it, take it outside. You know, I'm inside here because it's windy out there and this makes for better content, but it's not so windy. Um, the other thing is I need to do a little bit better job explaining exactly what we're doing here. So, so, um, right now it's, like I said, I've already tuned it once, but you saw me earlier over at the workbench, just kind of preset it. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to take this idler screw and we're going to start turning it in until the chain starts to move. Then we're going to pull the screwdriver out and we're going to come over here to the low and we're going to find out where it drops off on both sides. And I'm going to be using a little RPM gauge. Um, it's sitting over on the bench. Uh, let me grab that real quick. I'm going to be using this little RPM gauge. Um, and all, all it does is sense the electrical uh, firing of the, uh, the spark plug. And it tells me very accurately what, what the rotations are. Uh, so I'm going to be looking at this, I'm going to be listening to it with my ears, and I'm going to find the two points in the low idle um, that will, in between there is going to be a high point. It's kind of hard to explain. So there's, there's one end of it's going to start dropping off, there's the other end of it's going to start dropping off, and in the middle it's going to be that, that peak, right? So we want to go to one or the other sides of that peak. And then what we're looking for is throttle response with the, with the low mixture. So these are jets, by the way. You got your, I think I already showed these. You got your idler screw, which is LA, and that's at the bottom, always at the bottom. One closest to the, the front of the saw, that's going to be your low. And then the one back here is going to be, your H is your high. So your low is your throttle response. It's when you squeeze this trigger, how fast that picks up. It should be an immediate response to extreme high idle or extreme high RPM without bogging, without lugging, without dying, without, it should just be wham right now, right? Uh, your high is how your max RPM. So for that max RPM, you definitely need to look up a manual, uh, figure out what the max RPM is for your saw. I looked up mine, it's 13,000 RPM. Uh, and that's where the gauge really comes in handy uh, because you can't hear what 1300 RPM sounds like. Unless you're really, really skilled, I don't think anybody's that good. Uh, so you definitely need a gauge for that. Um, especially since we've modified the exhaust, um, we definitely don't want to go higher than that. If we go any higher than 1300 RPM, we run the risk of blowing up the saw. We don't want to do that. So uh, the other thing is you do want to do this with a chain and the bar on, um, you want to do it with the air cleaner on, the cover on, just like you would be using it when you're out working. Uh, the only difference is we're not going to be putting this into the cut. So um, make sure you got plenty of bar oil uh, in it, pl plenty of gas in it, and you want to warm it up for about a minute or so. That's a pretty small engine, doesn't take very long to get warmed up. Uh, so warm it up and um, we're getting ready to do that right now. Once it's warmed up, we can start making our adjustments and I'll show that process. So it's gonna be pretty loud, so.
All right, you may notice that I didn't actually let it warm up too long. That's because, uh, uh, well, I just did it. <laughs> so um, the saw was pretty warm already. So it only been sitting for maybe 10 minutes or so. Uh, the other thing I did, um, you saw that the, I found that little sweet spot with the low idle, uh, with the low screw, but the chain was still spinning. So you go back to the, uh, your idler screw and you start turning that down until it just stops spinning. Uh, give it a good couple of checks. Um, if the chain continues to, sp to spin on its own after that, you will turn it down a little bit more. Uh, the high side, so the spec says no more than 13,000 RPM. I got it right at 12.7, so 12,700 RPM. Um, right now, this saw sounds amazing. Uh, it runs amazing. I mean, just, I'll point it towards the camp. It's oiling amazing. There's oil coming out everywhere. Uh, it's, not, it's not leaking, it's supposed to do that. It's supposed to have really good uh, lubrication throughout the bar. So, um, so anyway, that's how you properly tune. Uh, that's how you properly, properly clean, adjust, and, you know, add the chain, all that stuff, tune, the carb tune, uh, a steel chainsaw. And I can't be happier with this saw. This saw has been just phenomenal. Now it's getting even better and it tuned up right just fine. I don't have to remove those limber to caps at all. Um, it, it went in the tune just fine. Usually if, you're, if you modify it like this and you can't get it to the right tune on it, then you need to remove those limiter caps. Um, for your saw, you probably got to look it up. If they're red, then you have to use like a wood screw to screw into them and then pull them out with a pair of pliers. The black ones, I think you just pop off. Um, that's the only two colors I've ever heard of is the red and the black. Uh, the, this one here has white. They're a little white and that's what the actually what you're screwing. It's not that the screwdriver is passing through those caps and turning like the, I believe the red ones do. So anyway, that's all I have for this video. Please like and subscribe if you haven't done so already. And please remember that we are going to be doing a giveaway when we hit a thousand subscribers. I don't know what that's going to be yet. Um, and there's some details that's going to come out in a later video with that, but you don't want to miss it. So uh, please, if you haven't done so already, hit that subscribe button, hit that little bell notification too. That way you get alerts. I don't upload, upload videos on a regular basis, as you well know. So hit that bell notification. That way you get alerted when and if we, uh, <laughs> when and if, when we upload more content. So uh, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time. Have a good day.